So you wanna be a beekeeper, but how do you set up your apiary? That's a question we get asked all the time. Today, we're gonna to tell you how. We've been keeping bees for over nine years. We have five different apiaries and about 50 hives on average per year that we manage. We love to teach beekeeping classes and we especially love to help people in the East Texas area figure out how to be the best beekeepers they can be. Well, there's many ways to set up an apiary. Uh, none of them are right or necessarily wrong, but we are gonna show you today what works for us here in East Texas. And we've done it several different ways before this, um, but we're finding that this might be the best so far that we've had. And you can see we've got several locations, several pallets, um, and they look a little bit different, um, but we've got room to expand. And we have found that the higher that we can get the hives on the pallets um, stacked, so we have three pallets tall, um, we're finding that that is working really well for us. So here's an example of some hives that we have on, there is a piece of conveyor belt under there. It's been a while and we haven't done a really good job of keeping the edges clear. Um, but you can see that like the grass, obviously it's the winter, so the grass is dead and it's low. But in the summer, you can see how tall it gets because I mean, there's a piece of grass right there under the hive. And in a hive like this, as the grass grows up, you'll start to see debris in the hive um, just when you go in and do a hive inspection and that kind of thing. So the other thing about this is the conveyor belt is not very wide. So you would have to get in there and either mow or edge pretty close to the hive versus having more space. See on this hive set up, we have the uh, conveyor belt that's keeping the grass uh, fairly you know, a good foot away from the hive and the hive entrance. Uh, we're using three pallets, um, which makes working the bees uh, a lot better on, on my, my back personally. Uh, I don't have to bend over as much as opposed to if they were directly almost on the ground with just one pallet. Um, you can, you know, it, it will get hard if you get a bunch of boxes in the spring and summer. If you've got five or six boxes, it, it'll get a little bit maybe high on you, but uh, for the most part, um, we find that, that this level of uh, hive works well for, for just back and general ergonomic considerations. So when you're looking for the best place, um, there's many factors that you consider. First is uh, sun location and just where you're actually gonna put the hive. Um, I prefer full sun. Uh, some people will put it in the shade. Uh, the reason we like full sun is it, um, our belief is that it helps reduce hive beetles in the hive, uh, a full sun location. Some people may put it in the shade just because they prefer to work in a shady area as opposed to a sunny area in the, the summertime. But overall for the health of the bees, we have found that they do better when they are in a full sun. And I know some of our customers, you know, are concerned, like, are the bees going to be okay in the heat of the summer, like when we have 100 degree days. And just like we tell them about the winter and when we drop into below freezing temperatures, the bees are really good at regulating the temperature of the hive. So we don't need to consider a shady location for their well-being. It's really, like he said, some people don't want to work them in the sun. Um, but as far as overall for the bees, it's the best for them to be in full sun. Um, and then also facing eastward, right? Um, really, it doesn't really affect it too much. The, the main consideration is you, you typically don't want to face entrances north. So as long as they're facing east, south, and even west, uh, you're going to be okay with that. Um, North is just a lot of issues with just the cold in the winter coming in the hive entrance. Um, they're less likely to, or they become active later in the day and uh, earlier in the evening when they're facing north just because they don't have a lot of sun going in the entrance. Plus the northern winds are usually our coldest winds. Yes. And so, I mean that, like having them facing the other directions, they don't like the cold wind blowing into the hive. Correct. Yeah. And so you also want a place that's not um, low and boggy, uh, you know, prone to a lot of standing water. Um, that creates, especially in the springtime, creates a lot of um, 
moisture in the air and it can, you know, increase maybe fungus and some of your other fungus related issues with, with a hive. So you want them in what is typically a, a place that just doesn't get real wet, so to speak, uh, not, not a boggy place, you know, um, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Um, and then let's see, we also, we, we do pallets under ours just to, con to elevate them a little bit. Sometimes we do railroad ties also. It just depends on what you can source. Um, we try not to spend a lot of money on, on that setting up the apiary, but what else? Um, here in East Texas, um, really Texas, we have a lot of Bermuda or, uh, creeping grass. And so that's why in, in our apiary, we like to put uh, different materials underneath just to reduce the grass that grows. Um, I personally am able to get a used conveyor belt for my work. So we use that. It's a, about a half inch rubber sh uh, strip that, that, that we put underneath, um, half inch thick. It's about 30 inches wide. Um, that works well. Some people like to use carpet or uh, mats for horse stalls, those can be somewhat expensive. You know, used carpet can be fairly cheap. And uh, when you look at our apiary, um, you can see the ones that we've done that to. It, it keeps the grass away. You don't have to edge around the hives as much or pull grass from around the hives as much. Um, when you don't do that, you do get a lot of grass and just weeds and stuff that are growing close up to the hive and can cause um, obstructions for the entrance and so you you'll want to clear those especially in the spring in the summer so the bees aren't uh, obstructed going in and out of the hive the other benefit to putting down something solid underneath the hive is that it's going to break the um it's going to break the cycle of the hive beetle so the hive beetle typically will lay eggs in the hive and then the eggs will come out drop into the soil and pupate in the ground and then they'll come back up and go into the hive and, and re, re, um, repeat that life cycle. Um, but having solid surface, the, they're not able to drop down into the dirt. And there's some other ways that you can deal with that as well. And we'll talk about that when we get into pests a little bit more. But as far as just setting up your apiary, you know, we advise full sun and then we advise elevation, getting your hives a little bit higher. Um, it makes it easier to work them that way. You're not bending over um, quite as much as if they were on the ground. You're gonna reduce the fire ants and that kind of stuff of getting into the hives. They do like to get into the hives, so elevating them does help reduce that. Um, and it can also reduce some of the other pests that we'll also talk about in the future, like skunks um, and so on. Anything else? That's it for this video. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in and please like our video and subscribe to our channel. That would be super helpful for us. And keep watching because we're going to just talk more about East Texas beekeeping.